It is now my pleasure to invite on stage to lead the panel discussion on public policies to promote gastronomy tourism, Mr. Ryan Datar. Ryan is BBC Travel Show presenter and a well-known face to many of you. Good morning, or is it afternoon already? I'm not sure. Um, hello, everyone. Great attendance here. Um, I really couldn't turn down this delicious opportunity to come here and host this panel full of distinguished guests who are about to come up on stage. Um, this is my first time in San Sebastian, and I found out that Lonely Planet called this the foodie capital of the world last year. And I had, last night, uh, the what, my favourite thing ever, the, the Hilda or the Gilda, which is the uh, Pinchos, yeah? Have you, have you had that? Great. And I found out today, somebody told me, it was named after Rita Hayworth, the, um, the actress, the Hollywood glamour, glamour actress. You learn something all the time. Um, I, as was just mentioned, I work for the travel show, I present the travel show, and what we really emphasise is experiential tourism. And obviously, that includes food. And some of the best things I've done uh, are learning how to, to, to cook in Vietnam, in Jordan. Um, one of the best experiences I've had, which Rebecca may know about, is that restaurant in Bogota, which is, I think it's called Andres uh, de Carne, um, which is just one amazing experience. Um, the, the waiters and the waitresses turn into performers. It's properly, properly immersive, uh, and I recommend it to anyone who goes there. But we're here today to talk about the nuts and bolts of tourism and gastronomy, and you know, it's important to remember that a third of a tourist budget or spend is on food every time they go somewhere, and they can, that can only be improved upon in terms of their experience, but also in terms of the jobs that it creates. So in order to, to talk about that more with specific countries, can I please welcome on the stage Her Excellency, uh, Ms. Isabel Oliver, the Secretary of State for Tourism in Spain. Um, Her Excellency, Ms. Eva Stravs Podloga, I beg your pardon, State Secretary in Slovenia. And His Excellency, Mr. Frano Matusic, State Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Croatia. Please come up on stage. And Rebecca, huh? yes, you're coming back. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, I want to start just by um, going around the panel and talking about the specific um, situation in, in your own country. So let's just ask this. What is the current state of gastronomy tourism in your country in terms of strategy, policy, and public-private collaboration. Let's start with you, Isabel. Hola, muy buenos días. Pues otra vez. Bueno, yo creo que sí tenemos una estrategia clara desde el Gobierno del Estado eh, en cuanto a este sector tan importante de turismo gastronómico. Nosotros estructuramos este producto turístico en base a los clubes de producto, que es eh, un ejemplo de colaboración público-privada en donde empresas, empresarios y administración, en este caso del Estado, se unen eh, para, con unas directrices y unos, diríamos, unas líneas de actuación, conformar este producto turístico que recoge, mmm, por ejemplo, en el, tenemos tres clubes de productos gastronómicos importantes, el de jamón, el del vino y Saborea España, eh, recogen mmm, de forma transversal, como es el turismo, pues mucho de la cadena de valor que eh, está eh, en este tipo, en este, en este caso tanto sea de vino como Saborea España, son restaurantes eh, y toda la cadena de valor, repito, para eh, esta colaboración público-privada. A partir de aquí, pues se trabaja de forma conjunta en todo el territorio del, spa, del Estado. Se están haciendo rutas de todas este tipo de clubes, en, este, en cada uno de estos clubes de producto. 
de forma que eh, también se promocionan a nivel de Tour España, nuestro ente de promoción, y esta colaboración yo creo que es absolutamente esencial y necesaria. Por supuesto, en estos clubes de producto, pero en cualquier tipo de eh, acciones que desde el Gobierno nosotros apoyamos y hacemos. Esta colaboración creo que es necesaria, esencial y a partir de ella trabajamos conjuntamente unos y otros, aprendiendo e innovando, eh, incorporando formación, incorporando todo tipo de cuestiones que pueden hacer que estos clubes de producto, en este caso gastronómico, que es muy importante, lo hemos dicho antes, lo ha dicho la propia eh, secretaria ahora mismo cuando estaba en su ponencia inaugural, esta colaboración, esta transversalidad del turismo, la parte de humana en este sentido del de, mm, empleo digno, de calidad, inclusivo, la importancia enorme que tiene la gastronomía en cuanto a la fijación de población eh, desde el sector primario a, a, a todos los sectores y en este sentido esta colaboración público-privada es la forma en do, como nosotros trabajamos este club y otros también, pero este claramente. You mentioned earlier that I think 265.000 people come just for, um, specifically for gastronomy tourism. Can that grow? Can you make it even more people coming just for that? Sí, según nuestras previsiones, sí, va a aumentar porque España es en sí una potencia turística gastronómica, es por supuesto turística, pero también gastronómica. Su enorme diversidad la hace pues, muy, muy atractiva, una calidad excelente. Tenemos eh, muchísimos profesionales que, por supuesto, son los que sitúan a nuestro destino turístico en esta inmejorable posición. Tenemos una materia prima eh, de primerísima calidad, tratada con unos profesionales de primer orden. Tenemos muchas estrellas Michelin. Tenemos eh, el, el top ten de los restaurantes situados a los mejores dos o tres del mundo. Tenemos esta enorme potencia que, por supuesto, nosotros desde el Gobierno del Estado vamos a seguir apoyando, vamos a seguir colaborando pues para mejorar todavía más y la participación del gobierno por supuesto en este foro importantísimo es una prueba de ello. Thank you. Um I mean obviously here in this very city 17 Michelin stars I think alone in this city which is amazing. Um let me go to you Fran. Um I have obviously been to Dubrovnik, to Zagreb which are great for food. But on the same score, what what is the current state would you say of gastronomy tourism in Croatia at the moment? Mm. <clears throat> thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me on this fifth forum of gastronomy. And thanks to excellent institution, which is uh, Bas Kulner Center. We are here in San Sebastian. Uh, according to our strategy, Croatian strategy, tourism is, gastro-tourism is one of the main products, touristic products, on which we base uh, development and the future of uh, Croatian tourism. Uh, I would like to say that, that uh, according to the latest survey, we had uh, almost 30% of our tourists express that main motivation for their comings to Croatia is gastro tourism. So that means that uh, we are quite visible, and I, I would like to say that uh, we, starting, we started our cooperation with the Michelin Guide three years ago, and that helped, that helped us a lot and speaking about visibility of uh, gastro tourism in Croatia and now we have five restaurants in Croatia one of them is in Dubrovnik and one in Zagreb as you mentioned these two destinations which are very important and I, I would like to say that there are two main challenges now for us in Croatia when speaking about the ministry one is a uh, labor shortage suitable workers in, 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 in tourism and the hospitality sector And, of course, uh, the other one is the improvement of quality. Improvement of quality by education, only we can improve the quality in the tourism and hospitality sector. That's why we established uh, recently, just a few months ago, we established six centers of competencies in tourism and hospitality sector. And I hope and I can announce here that uh, one of these centers will, will be in Dubrovnik, and this center will cooperate collaborate with Bas Kulner Center. That's, that's very important for us, and that's why one of the reasons why we are here for many years. And of course, we think that we are not uh, 
competitors. I mean, I mean, all our countries are, have their heritage, their, uh, their culture, their history, and through tasting gastronomy, you can feel not only taste of ingredients, which are very important, of course, especially if they are ecologically produced, but you can feel the soul of country and soul of the people. So th I think that what Mr. Alonso said uh, uh, in his lecture on the beginning, it is very, tourism today is a very important social cohesion factor. And that's, uh, that's our main focus mm -hmm. to encourage our educational institutions to collaborate together with, with entrepreneurs, with the public sector, with the private sector. And I think that uh, horizontally, tourism is linked with everything. Tourism is main driver in our country of our economy. Almost 20% of GDP is coming from tourism sector. So you can imagine how important is tourism for Croatia. We are only 4 million population. We have 4 million population, small country. But last year we had almost 20 million tourists in Croatia. We want, yeah. of course, seasonality is also a problem in Croatia. We'll come back. We to want that. to spread yeah. the yeah. touristic season, but we we'll come back later. Yeah, on. okay. Yeah, I think Thanks that's a very much. important point, and we will come back to that. Um, Eva, Slovenia. I've been to. I've been everywhere. <laughs> I've been to uh, Lake Vled and to the lovely green city Ljubljana. You have amazing history and culture, but relatively food, I don't know too much about in, in uh, Slovenia. Tell, 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 me, tell me more. At what stage are you in terms of developing uh, tourism and, and gastronomy? Oh, I think, thank you for the question, and it's really great to be here with you. Um, we started really the path on uh, strategy and gastronomy already in 2006, when we decided to build the strategy for gastronomy. And uh, two years ago, we published a new strategy of development of Slovene tourism, a sustainable growth of uh, Slovene tourism. And uh, all the government, all the ministers uh, really get know with this strategy. And one of the... Um, uh, Re, um, and one of the products that they were pointed out was really gastronomy. So we said in this strategy that Slovenia should be the green, active and healthy for five star experiences. And this fifth star is definitely gastronomy. They are people, they are ingredients, the dishes. So uh, we, we kind of qualified four macro regions because of our location and our history. Also, gastronomy is very rich. We have Alpine part of Slovenia, we have Pannonian part, uh, capital Ljubljana, and then Mediterranean with Karst region. So all this gives a really a very special mixture of ingredients, uh, very special ones, and of course then the dishes we like to promote and to share uh, with our guests. And then this path, it's important that all the ministries are getting along, that if, let's say, the Ministry for Food uh, decides to place the candidacy that 20th of May should be the B World B Day, the whole government stands behind this. And from last year on, I don't know if you know, it's on uh, this Slovene proposal, the 20th of May, UN accepted it, it's a World B Day. And because of this, every 10th Slovene is a beekeeper, by the way, uh, we, are, we developed uh, different, uh, more dishes with the honey. It's not honey itself. There are other products, they are, uh, it's apiculture, it's a, uh, food and beverage, alcohol, non-alcohol connected or with honey. So uh, these are the things that we are doing it together with uh, SMEs, of course, with public and private sector to develop um, Slovene gastronomy, but not, uh, I mean to develop, to, get, to give it more attention in international um, world. And I think a few years ago, in 2017, the best female chef in the world uh, is coming from Slovenia, Miss Anna Roš. So that gives us a special attention uh, as well. So we do have a lot of um, good chefs. Last year, we got the first guide in, uh, for GoMU with more than 130 restaurants in it. So that means that uh, this atmosphere is very lively and good. And regarding the fact that Michelin is in the region, uh, so I'm sure that sooner or later uh, we'll be in uh, Slovenia too. 
and uh, to promote uh, really gastronomy. I think it's very important to do it internal in the country and of course globally external. So in the country it's uh, important that uh, local people, the young people, that they are aware how important it is to eat good, uh, that they respect people to pr they produce ingredients, they can know how to prepare a good food. So I think one of the uh, things we are doing, and it's worth I mention it, we do have um, two times per year, it's in November and October, uh, a week of restaurants where it's also possible to get really very good uh, menu from the well-known chef for a very acceptable price. It's uh, mostly for the students, for young people, to really get to know Slovene cuisine. And then, of course, to decide to share and or maybe to go to work into uh, gastronomy. So, um, Gastronomy is the fifth star of uh, Slovene tourism. Together with the people they produce and they, with the good chefs, and of course, uh, the storytelling was a very important word. Uh, we started uh, today's session: uh, storytelling, sustainability, and of course, respect. Because we sometimes the chef said, "You, you are what you eat." And um, regarding the fact that in our slogan, I feel Slovenia, uh, is feel love, we also have the slogan, taste Slovenia. So if Slovene Tourist Board has in these two years uh, tourism and culture, in the next two years we will have uh, tourism and gastronomy regarding the fact that uh, we won the candidacy, we are already established as a European gastronomic region uh, 2021. And um, we are, of course, looking forward to build um, this gastronomic year together with uh, all our partners and, of course, to get as much, as many guests from all over the world as possible. Thank you. Um, Rebecca, I mean, you oversee, if you like, 22 countries, so we're not going to go through each one. But if in terms of Latin America, I'm very interested. And I think Peru is regarded as being a shining example. I wonder if you can just give me a couple of examples of where it's done well, to, uh, gastronomy tourism is done well in terms of employment and in terms of the, the, the product and where it perhaps could improve. Perhaps you could tell us that. Sí, muchas gracias. Eh, yo creo que México y Perú han sido probablemente los dos países que han usado mucho más el turismo gastronómico como parte de su marca país. Eh, el resto de los países tienen una muy buena oferta, ha mejorado en muchos de los países, pero yo creo que ahí en términos de políticas públicas todavía estamos un poquito rezagados. Eh, especialmente eh, en esta conexión ¿no? de la alimentación con las otras razones eh, para hacer turismo. Eh, muchos de nuestros países han basado su turismo en rutas culturales, por ejemplo, en toda la parte centroamericana, la Ruta Maya, eh, en, en el resto de Sudamérica, en las bellezas naturales, etcétera. Pero la parte gastronómica ha estado mucho más rezagada en términos de las políticas públicas. Y yo creo que ahí tenemos una gran oportunidad y, y yo quiero enfatizar tal vez este aspecto de ver el tema del turismo y la gastronomía también desde un punto de vista de desarrollo mucho más integral, porque hay que traer a la conversación a otros sectores del gobierno para poder hacer una política pública integral. No, es sol, no son solo los sectores de turismo, también tienen que estar los sectores de agricultura, también tienen que estar los sectores de desarrollo social y de inclusión, también tienen que estar los actores territoriales y probablemente tengamos que pensar en una manera distinta de organizar nuestros gobiernos y nuestra política pública para que pueda haber un espacio de conversación para eh, unas políticas en las que no pase, como decimos en mi país, no sé si esto lo van a poder traducir eh, los traductores, pero que borremos con el codo lo que alguien hace con la mano, porque muchas veces lo que hace un sector eh, afecta negativamente a las buenas intenciones del otro sector. ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces, ¿cómo podemos organizarnos en un espacio más multiactor, 
multiinstitucional y multinivel probablemente es una de las tareas pendientes más importantes en esta nueva agenda. Y mi segunda reflexión, tal vez acá si me permites, es decir que si bien debemos dar estrellas para la calidad de la comida, también deberíamos dar estrellas para cómo se obtiene la comida. Si de verdad estamos en un ambiente de empresas sostenibles, responsables socialmente, eh, deberíamos poder evaluar eso también. Y yo digo esto porque hay un gran movimiento de tratar de que las, los emprendimientos no sean solo eh, para maximizar utilidades, sino para que sean emprendimientos que tengan un propósito, que tengan un valor desde el punto de vista de la inclusión y de la sostenibilidad. Eh, en, en, en inglés dicen que no, no queremos solo empresas for profit, we, we want eh, 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 private sector for benefit too, for purpose. Y ahí deberíamos poder evaluar y cambiar un poco tal vez nuestros indicadores para poder evaluar de que estos emprendimientos sean eh, viables económicamente, pero también inclusivos y sostenibles. Y como dije en mi alocución, yo creo que el turismo y la gastronomía tienen un potencial de inclusión social enorme que deberíamos poder explotar y que deberíamos poder valorar. It's very interesting, actually, because I, I think a lot of younger people, particularly, when you talk about um, sustainability, they are going to ask that question of a restaurant or anywhere. How green, if you like, is this food that I'm getting here? And I think that'll become even more. And it's interesting that you talk about having Mich a star, perhaps integrated into the Michelin star system. They should do that. That'd be really interesting. I want to go back to the, to the issue of skills and labor um, to a certain extent. Now, Yes, of course, there are master chefs and there's great training and all, this, all that stuff, but the reputation often of the hospitality industry is that it's a lot of casual people, very, very low security in terms of jobs um, and, you know, poor wages. How are we are going to improve that? Because that surely is going to attract people to work in this field. Um, Isabel, if you could start. Bueno, esta es una cuestión que ha preocupado al gobierno del Estado desde el primer momento y en este sentido se han hecho mesas interdepartamentales, precisamente por lo que decía ahora hace un momento, interdepartamentales porque el turismo es muy transversal, entonces es necesario abordar políticas turísticas desde todos los ministerios, desde toda la administración pública. Les decía que se ha abordado este tema, nuestra ministra de Trabajo uh, ha hecho unas mesas de trabajo para la mejora de la calidad en el empleo, todo el empleo, por supuesto también el del turismo, el de hostelería, pues para mejorar estas condiciones de trabajo, para tener un trabajo igual eh, para hombres y mujeres, eh, mismas retribuciones, todavía se está trabajando en ello, por supuesto, para abordar eh, sistemas de las enfermedades profesionales derivadas de precisamente su eh, trabajo en hostelería. Hay una serie de enfermedades muy, muy eh, concretas que se dan en entre trabajadores de hostelería, pues que se reconozca estas enfermedades como profesionales y abordar precisamente esta situación. Mejora de las condiciones de trabajo, de los contratos de trabajo y de las retribuciones de trabajo. Todo ello eh, ha ocupado ya eh, desde el Gobierno estas cuestiones y, por supuesto, se va a seguir eh, trabajando para que este empleo sea realmente de calidad, inclusivo, igualitario y que pueda favorecer a todas estas personas. En este sentido, se tiene que trabajar desde todos los puntos de vista, como decíamos antes, y por esta misma cuestión hemos eh, hecho nuestra Comisión Interdepartamental de Turismo, en donde todos los ministerios con cuestiones relacionadas en turismo, que son muchísimos, pero muchísimos, salud, eh, educación, fomento, eh, nos reunimos, se reúnen al más alto nivel para abordar estas situaciones y no ocurra que lo que hacemos con una mano se borre con el codo. And youth unemployment obviously has been an issue in Spain, and that is, well, this surely is a classic industry where you can get people in and trained and in secure jobs. That, that's really good. Um, and, Fernando, you talked about seasonality, but you also mentioned that you haven't got enough people to actually work in, in the industry. So how, so how do you fix that? Yeah, that's our main challenge today. Uh, last year, our government took the decision to to enter this 
to, to open this space for uh, workers from uh, outside, from abroad. And the last year we issued some uh, 15,000 licenses for working in Croatia, but that's, that's only, only permanently because we think that uh, we have to attract our Croatian people to work in this sector and that's, about, that's the reason why we established these centers of competencies. And uh, of course we are also uh, giving some support uh, to entrepreneurs by helping them with the scholarship, with internships for students, you know, and uh, we, have, we have some programs which encourage them to work together with the schools, with vocational and uh, higher education institutions. And this, this is really, this gives the good results in the last few years, and I hope that this will continue. Of course, uh, let's say that these gastronomy professions are not in enough good valorized in society. So I think that I can, I can say that from one side that uh, we have negative selection in these schools. I'm very open when mm. speaking about this issue mm. because it's a very important issue. Now we want to attract people and to say to them, yes, you can work, you, you can be chef, you can go to the higher institutions and learn and to, to, to finish master programs and your education will be really valorized, good enough, and uh, your wage will be good enough to attract you to work in this in this sector, but we have to tackle the issue of seasonality. It's very important because if you have a permanent job all year round, then you will secure enough places, enough job places. So it's, it's very important to tackle at the same time. This is the reason why our strategy has focus on a special forms of tourism, which can help us to have all year round tourism. So we are developing a very strong in our health tourism. Health, uh, nautical tourism, uh, gastro tourism, rural tourism, culture tourism, you know, these are all special forms of tourism which can help us to, to have all year round tourism. And they all connect? Yeah, well, of course they, they yeah. connect. And one key word is horizontal link with every special form of tourism, that's sustainability. Mm. You know? Yep. So. Eva, do kids in Slovenia want to be chefs and want to work in, 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 the, in the gastronomy business? Um, maybe more last few years than they used to. But um, again, um, even for the parents uh, to really encourage their, let's say, uh, well um, educated, they would go to a gymnasium and then, or high school, and then the kid would say, oh, mom, I'm sorry, I won't finish university. I really want to be a chef. It's something that the parents really need to do with themselves and say, yes, you do what you want to do. It's a great uh, profession. Uh, you will have a, okay, a very interesting uh, life, so you should do what you want. But I think it's really important for us uh, as a public sector as well to, to really communicate and to have a dialogue together with the different sectors, as we said, and to offer the young people to let them know that they are having a career path if they will um, be in gastronomy, that they will have a good conditions to work. Now it's, uh, if I'm honest, in Slovenia now it's the chefs because they are rare, there are not so much, they can get a good salary, I mean Slovene chef in, in the restaurants, especially before the season. And now it's the, biggest, the, the bigger problem, they are uh, good waiters. Because as we said, if you want to have the whole story of the good dish, you need the chef, you need the producer, and you need the waiter to communicate with the guests uh, what kind of a, a dish um, they served. So um, the career path, the respect really for the profession, this is also something we should all build together, um, that these are great professions and uh, that you can get a really good life and that you can also have a family, not that if you start to work in gastronomy that you are like going to monastery and then being 24-7 uh, in, in the restaurant. So all this is, I think, important for uh, the young people to see 
what this profession, beautiful profession, can offer. And of course, it's up to guests to respect it. It's up to us to make the uh, public opinion to help to be really a respectable, rewarding, and definitely a possibility for a career uh, path for the young people. Um, Rebecca, in terms of, of, and I'm sticking to Latin America here, we're talking about a lot of family-run businesses, aren't we, in terms of food? We're no. talking about um, the authentic experience. That's surely where the real possibilities are, mm -hmm. where people come to anywhere in Latin America, um, Colombia, Cuba, and you go into someone's home, uh, it becomes a little restaurant. Is that the route forward, do you think, for, for, for a lot of people there? Sí, eh, yo creo que sí, eh, pero creo que falta mucho apoyo. Eh, en primer lugar, creo que falta apoyo en términos de capacitación y educación. Eh, si ustedes ven la oferta educativa en nuestros países, eh, hay muy poca oferta educativa a alto nivel en los temas gastronómicos, sí más en los temas de turismo, pero no en los temas gastronómicos, ahí es mucho menos. Yo creo que ahí hay mucho que aprender de sus países, ¿no? Eh, y que mucho del intercambio y cooperación podría estar precisamente relacionado a ello. En segundo lugar, es cierto que muchos son empresas familiares, eh, que requieren apoyo en términos de, del apoyo que requieren todas las pequeñas y medianas empresas, ¿no? Tienen que pasar al mundo digital y muchas de ellas no tienen capacidad para pasar al mundo digital y hay que hacer un esfuerzo, un proceso eh, para la digitalización. Nosotros estamos ahora en un proyecto, un programa eh, entre varios países precisamente para medir el grado de madurez digital de muchas de las pequeñas y medianas emprendimientos y yo creo que nos toparemos mucho en este sector para tratar de ayudarlo, eso se, es algo fundamental. Eh, y yo creo que tiene razón en las, en las secretarias de Estado, hay que apostar a que esto sea valorado por la sociedad. ¿Verdad? Que se entienda que es, un, que, es un, que es parte de una cadena de valor muy importante, no solo para la economía, sino para la inclusión social y para la participación de las comunidades. Yo creo que aquí hay un elemento comunitario en lo que me estás diciendo y que la organización de las comunidades en ese sentido eh, es, muy, es eh, muy importante. España, por ejemplo, tiene todo este tema de denominación de origen de los productos sí. que ha realmente eh, enfatizado el valor cultural de un producto que se, eh, de cero kilómetros eh, en una comunidad. Nosotros tenemos mucho menos eh, evolución, digamos, en el tema de denominación de origen que le ayudaría a muchas comunidades y, y, y emprendimientos familiares a, a poder tener una performance mucho, eh, mucho mejor. ¿no? Eh, pero yo, tengo, yo, yo soy optimista. En este sentido, la verdad, porque en primer lugar eh, hay muchos jóvenes yendo a las empresas familiares y que están cambiando las empresas familiares para bien. Yo creo que los economistas, esta es una confesión, <ríe> yo soy economista, <ríe> eh, eh, los economistas nos equivocamos al pensar que las empresas más dinámicas iban a ser las empresas abiertas al capital. Pero nos hemos dado cuenta que las empresas abiertas al capital tienen una visión de muy corto plazo, porque el mercado los obliga a una inmediatez, ¿no? En cambio, las empresas familiares pueden tener una visión de más largo plazo, porque son empresas que están ahí para quedarse en la tradición familiar. Entonces, ¿cómo hacer que esta ventaja de las empresas familiares se encuentre con las ventajas de las empresas accionarias que es el hecho de salir de su confort, ¿verdad? de poder innovar, de poder arriesgarse un poco más. Y para eso necesitan instrumentos de crédito, instrumentos de apoyo y políticas públicas eh, que vayan mucho más dirigidas y sean mucho más efectivas. Ok. I mean, this is, I think this is fascinating, this discussion, because we could talk so much more. I've been told that we've just got one, time for one more question. Now, I am going to put this question. This is a question that I, I met somebody, Edina, from Hungary yesterday, and she wanted to ask this question. And I think this also applies in terms of the takeaway, if you like, <laughs> for some of the countries here um, and some of the places like Ushuaia, who I also met last night. 
the smaller countries, the ones that are just starting out, what would your advice be to them in terms of making sure that gastronomy is associated with the image of the country? How do you make the, the two things fit together in terms of the potential tourist's mind? I'll just turn this around a bit. Fran, why don't you start? Thank you very much. Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, the beginning that gastronomy represents the soul of the country and the soul of that dis destination. So that means that uh, we have to have the best offer in destination to taste and the flavors and uh, everything uh, connected with, with the ingredients. And at the same time, uh, what we want to do, I just want to make connection with the previous speakers, uh, is we have to promote gastro professionals, professions, and we have to give back dignity of these mm. professions. Mm. That's very important. Mm. You know? Then you will attract people to work in the sector. Mm -hmm. But the message for, for all who are coming to, to, to Croatia is that they, they can taste something what they can uh, taste nowhere else. So that, that's the main, yeah. of course, you, you can taste uh, the fresh seafood and the uh, agricultural local producers, uh, local products, and it is important to create small value chains. That means that local producers should be connected with the restaurants, and once you come to this restaurant, you know where is this ingredients com coming from, mm -hmm. and the quality of that ingredients is it ecologically produced also, and so on and so on. Okay. So our task is to connect all of them, especially agriculture with tourism sector. That's uh, one important task for all of us, I think. And uh, I think that uh, we should continue to support uh, professions in the in, in industrial sector. So it's, that's one of the main tasks okay, for the future. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be quite brisk with this, if you don't mind. And, I mean, Isabel, Spain is known for its food. People, come, people know about that. Um, so it's, it's, it's in a very good place in terms of the image. But if you were giving a, a tip, one tip, to a new country that's wanting to get into to gastronomy tourism or to a new business uh, in a smaller country, like Georgia was another country I met yesterday who was starting out on this. What would that tip, what would that piece of advice be? Yo empezaría uh, por la parte de la producción, de la producción de la materia prima, ¿no? Uh, mejorar condiciones de trabajo, mejorar la innovación, mejorar uh, toda la cadena de valor de la producción de uh, lo que se usa en gastronomía, de la materia prima. Por supuesto, también mejorar la formación de los profesionales y reputar. Reputar es lo que yo creo que nos hace falta en, en España, posiblemente reputar toda eh, la formación desde la sala, cocineros, todos, ¿no? Y a partir de aquí, mmm, por supuesto, promocionar, pero es necesario, en primer lugar, toda la cadena de valor mejorar, con, introduciendo e incorporando nuevas tecnologías, la mano de obra, por supuestísimo, la parte personal, yo creo que en este ámbito eh, es casi, me atrevería a decir que es imposible sustituir a la parte humana, pero por supuesto hacer, eh, incorporar estas nuevas tecnologías, tanto a la producción como a la industria agroalimentaria y como por supuesto también a la comercialización de nuestros restaurantes, de nuestro producto y dar a conocer. Pero yo creo que es esencial la reputación de la formación, por supuesto que sea muy buena y reputarla y todo lo que hace referencia a nuestra materia prima y la, y la promoción. La promoción en nuestro caso en España es relativamente fácil porque tenemos un país con una excelente materia prima, unos excelentes profesionales, una excelente diversidad en todo nuestro territorio que yo creo que nos hace ser eh, pues precisamente esta primera potencia también turística y por supuesto gastronómica con este ejemplo que tenemos aquí en San Sebastián. Okay. Thank you. I've got to wrap it up now because of um, time uh, situation. Um, for the other two, I'm sure that you can talk to them later. They have got amazing expertise in this topic. But um, I, I'm, I'm optimistic like you, Rebecca. And mm -hmm. I think there's a very strong future in this. And uh, young people will definitely get into it. I think that's the main Absolutely. point. So can I please ask you to thank the panel here today? Thank you.